beta alanine, a beginner's guide. I'm reading this off a of health line. What is the function in athlete's body composition, benefits, source, doses, effects, combination? Beta alanine is a popular supplement among athletes and fitness enthusiasts. That's because it's been shown to enhance performance and benefit overall health. This article explains everything you need to know. What is beta alanine? Beta alanine is a non-essential amino acid. Unlike most amino acids, it is not used by your body to synthesize proteins. Instead, together with histidine, it produces carnosine, and carnosine is stored in your skeleton muscle. Carnosine reduces lactic acid accumulation in muscles during exercise, which leads to improved athletic performance. Now, I don't necessarily think you need to be an athlete to take it because you've got to perform every day. If you're sitting in the office, uh, you definitely need to walk at lunch, you need to walk before work, after work, you need to ride a bike, something. I work, I walk all day. I work, I probably walk four or five miles a day or Beta alanine, beta alanine is a non-essential amino acid. Your body uses it to produce carnosine, which helps produce, which helps improve exercise performance. How does it work? In your muscles, histidine levels are normal, normally high, and beta beta alanine levels low, which limits the production of carnosine. Supplementing with beta alanine has shown to elevate carnosine levels in the muscles by 80 percent. This is how carnosines act during exercise. Glucose is broken down. Glycolysis is, glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose, which is the main source of fuel during high intensity exercise. Lactate is produced as you exercise your muscles break glucose glucose down into lactic acid this is converted into lactate which produces hydrogen ions so you can go you can actually to help with this you can actually go to the store and start brushing your teeth with baking soda and if you taste a little bit if you swallow a little bit it's going to be part of it some people take it every day like with water or whatever the hydrogen ions reduce the pH level in your muscles, making them more acidic. Muscle acidity, acidity blocks glucose breakdown and reduces your muscles' ability to contract the call that this causes fatigue. Carnosine buffer. Carnosine serves as a buffer against the acid, reducing the acidic acidity in muscles during the intensity exercise. Since the beta alanine supplements increase carnosine levels they help your muscles reduce their acid levels during exercise. This, lesson all, this le lessens overall fatigue. Beta alanine supplements increase carnosine, which reduces the acidic, acidity in your muscles during high intensity exercise. So that's the article on Healthline regarding beta alanine. So, it's a non-essential amino acid. I've got this uh, vital proteins, collagen peptides that I take pretty much with food. Every I just sprinkle it on the food. And uh, it's got alanine, 731 milligrams, arginine, 759, aspartic acid, glutamine acid, glycine, histazine, hydroxylysine, hydroxyproline, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, Metha, ionine, proline, serine, theranine, tryptophan, tyrosine, valine. And so all these, it says uh, vital, there's a note at the bottom, contains eight of nine essential amino acids. And so I've been uh, using the baking soda to brush my teeth every day. And, I, you know, Brush my teeth two or three times a day, and so one of the one of those times I use bacon. So I might start sprinkle a little bit on the food and experiment with it. 
but I might start just recording as I'm reading these articles, recording them, create a create a folder or a database with this stuff. People, some people don't want to read; they just want they want to listen, you know, and create a and not just read healthline articles, but different articles and kind of break it down into sections: amino acids. Uh, stuff you could over the counter stuff, bananas, food, whatever. Just pick one, maybe just pick an organ. That's what you could, that's, that's what I could do. Just pick an organ and put in a database muscles, heart, sugar, which is uh, nerves, endings, or whatever. Nerves, pick a different organ or a di different system in the body, record it, put it in a database, and I think that'll help people. And then I'll download the database to a hard drive and I'll always have it. And uh, if they crash my system like they always try to do, they're always attacking me. When they crash the system, I've got it on a hard drive, you know. The enemy wants you sick, depressed, alone, negative, pessimistic, all those things. Instead of love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith, walking by faith, living in joy. And there's people who are actually say they're saved and they like to see you when you fail. They, they, want, they love it when you fail. I don't know if it's something in them from childhood or something from their family, but there's, there's people who claim to be saved and they, they like when you fail or when you don't succeed or when trouble comes your way. They, they enjoy that. Now, if they are saved, God is, see, God in, Deuter in the Old Testament, God looks at the heart, right? And so, if your enemy, and these are not even your enemy, these are people who are trying to build you up and support you, but there's denominational Christians who. They want to see you fail. They want to talk about you. They want to tear you down. There's a difference between exposing the system and the goats in the system who are trying to steal, kill, and destroy versus somebody who claims to be on your team who's trying to tear you down. Claims to be on the same team, the same side. Claims to be with God, but they want to see you fail. All the denominational Christians that don't believe in the hologram or they don't believe in the creation code or they don't believe in faith alone or they don't believe that that god is everywhere all the time and all things point back to him they don't believe in the archetypes they don't believe in the the fact that you can rightly divide the word so that means you can rightly divide 3d all those people who don't believe that and who attack that you're trying to help them if you read the book of Proverbs, it will protect you, right? It keeps you from the scorner. It keeps you from the, from the, uh, the evil person. And also, if you just observe and think about your childhood, think about things that you've been through, you just sit back and observe, you can actually see the patterns of an agent, of a narcissist, of a psychopath, you can see their patterns. The duper's delight. The uh, uh, whatever it is. You can see the patterns. You can see it in their body language. You can hear it in their words. You can see what they laugh about. If they laugh at somebody getting hurt, or if they laugh at the dirty jokes, or if they laugh at the the uh, the person who's in pain. There's some people who take advantage of animals, take advantage, I mean, they hurt animals, they hurt, they take advantage of those that are handicapped. They want to hurt the downcasted because they get a kick out of it. And a lot of them, I've seen it. They'll say, they'll, you'll come around them, they'll say something like, I'm saved. Six months later, you're, they're saying stuff, they're, they're trying to hurt somebody or they're laughing about somebody's uh, misfortune or whatever. I don't even like to use the word fortune. 
but they're laughing about a struggle that somebody's going through. And it's like, well, guess what? You're probably going to go through that same struggle or worse to give you compassion. <laughs> to teach you compassion. To teach you to not be high-minded, you know? Anyway, so that's what I might do. This is a beta alanine. It's the same stuff. If you Google it, you can, baking soda does this. I'll have to, let me just, let me study baking soda and uh, see the benefits of baking soda and I'll upload that one. And I'll go ahead and start the database. And so this will be a, a section in uh, muscles, fatigue or whatever. Eventually, I'm going to hit on something that's that's going to be really uh, uh, beneficial to mankind, which I've already hit on something, but most people are not ready for it. The creation code, the faith alone, the die daily. You know what's the most beneficial for you? The, 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 let me think of the top five things that are the most beneficial for a person. Drinking water, sleep, staying organized, keeping clean. It's, it's going to be the top 10 or top 20. Sleep, organize, less stress, living a uh, simple life, cutting off the social media as much as possible, cutting off the noise, meditation, contemplation, Learning a new trade. If you have a trade and you're bored with it, go learn a new trade. You could even volunteer to learn a new trade. Uh, build something. Create something. Whether it's art, whether it's construction or whatever. Have a hobby. Wash your clothes. Vacuum your house. Clean your toilet. Get you a bicycle and just ride around the block if that's all. Even if it's a cheapo bicycle. Cut back sugar. Cut back fast food. Go to Walmart and get you a foam roller and use the foam roller. Go to Walmart and get you one of these uh, resistant cords and do some exercise with the resistance cords. Study medical stuff. Listen to Dr. Berg. Listen to doctors like Dr. Berg. Don't believe the system noise. Don't believe the system lies. Diabetes can be healed. And that's what they've been trying to do. Think about this. These, these rich people, you see these movies where they go into a sauna, right? And they sit there and they talk about business while they're in the sauna. They're sweating out the impurities. So they're talking about business, but they're also at the same time healing their body by sitting in a sauna, sweating, sweating it out through the skin. Your health is your wealth. And that's what they're going to attack. Because if you can outlive the average person and you're getting that social security and your health, they don't they want you to they want you to die before you get your social security. That's what they want. They really do. And a lot of spouses, there's a lot of people who are married, they only got married to get the person's social security or their property, or whatever. There's a lot of people that marry just for money. And on the one hand, I can understand that, but it should be a team effort. And it shouldn't be somebody uh, thinking it's all about them. You know, the queen bee mindset is all about me. You know, it's a team effort. If the man's out working and to, to make a good living and to provide a home, and the woman's at home raising the kids. She should keep order the house. As he's ordering his business, she's ordering the house. And it's a team effort, you know. Now, if he's out working, she's out working, they should be saving, trying to get out of debt to where she don't have to work. Or they run a business together. I mean, there's always work to be done. I'm not saying a woman shouldn't work. I'm saying that work is good. But it shouldn't be stressful. If they're working together, it don't have to be stressful. You know, what's sad is I found out through the years that the single people are have less stress. 
unless they're single with kids, there's a lot of stress and all that. But the single people seem to have less stress. Why is that? Marriage should not be more stress. It should be a team effort to where you're on the same page, where you're benefiting each other, and you're wanting that other person to, to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. You want to build them up. You want them to exercise. You want them to eat right. You want them to think right. You want them to be spiritual. You want them, if they want to meditate and they want to fast in prayer, and it says that in 1 Corinthians 7. In 1 Corinthians 7, it says that. It says, uh, uh, don't withhold yourself from one another lest the devil tempt you unless, just by, unless you both agree and by prayer and fasting, you know. When the two become one, it should be a team. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be competition at all. If the two become one, they each one complements each other, right? Why are you competing with you with with each other? Now there might be some conversations where you might disagree, but it's not a fight. When you have a conversation, here's how you break the word conversation down. C O N means together. Verse, verse is the second part. The, the etymology of conversation is together, verse. And so together, verse, verse means turn. And so as you communicate with somebody, as you turn the truth over in your mind, then you develop uh, from each perspective. So a marriage with no conversation is not even a marriage. A business with no conversation is not a business. A friendship with no con no conversation is not even a friendship. A relationship of any kind without conversation is not a relationship because that's what the word relation means. It communicates back and forth. As I've been studying on my vacation. I've been studying these different databases, relational databases, back and forth communication. This table communicates with this table. This database communicates with this database. Relations. Relate. Oh, I relate to that. Oh, I relate. That's why it's called relatives, because you relate to that bloodline. You relate to that upbringing. You relate to that. And as you move into your own, uh, creating your own bloodline or creating your own whatever you want to call it, your own uh, legacy or whatever, you create your own path, let's say that then you hope other people come along that you can relate with, but they don't always do. They stay, some people stay in their, that path, uh, the old paths, the old destructive paths, they stay in it, but you can't stay in it. You can't relate to that anymore. You only relate to healthy paths. Can you imagine a person, let's say a husband and wife, uh, get married and let's let's say the man is eating sugar all the time and the woman says I'm not eating any more sugar and so what happens when she cuts back sugar her mind becomes more clear her body feels better no inflammation I've actually seen this where I've seen a woman uh, have opportunity with my jobs and situations where I see a lot of different people and situations and couples and all. I've seen a woman, she was, she was probably like 65, and she was walking around, darting around. She looked like she was 18, walking around. And her husband comes by, and he's, he's been over, and he can hardly walk. He's got a belly. She's thin. He's got this belly hanging over. And I asked her, I said, uh, do you do the keto diet? She said, yeah, I do the keto diet. I said, I knew there was a reason you're able to dart around like you do. She said, well, it's a modified keto diet, but it's similar. And I said, yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> How did I know? Because the patterns are all over the place. I know this one person that works at a restaurant, and the guy... He's, he just looks like, he's saved man, but he looks like he's just downcasted. He's probably the same age as me. I think he's about the same age, but he looks like he's about to die. And it's like, there's no lie. I mean, he's saved. I know he's saved. 
but there's no life in there. I was like, he's just like, there's life. I can see life. He knows the truth. But he's like, there's nothing, there's no motivation. He's just existing. That's the demeanor that he that he portrays. He's just he's just existing. And it's sad. So the life path, whatever legacy, and so what I'm trying to do is record as many messages as I can, put them all on a hard drive, send them out to people. I got one person I gotta send her out a copy. I got two people really. I gotta send this out. And when I'm dead and gone, hopefully it'll help somebody. Somebody, the code is going to start to reveal itself more and more. People are starting to see it's a simulation. People are starting to see it's a hologram. It's actually a fractal hologram. And it's a repeat. And as people wake up to that, they step back from the drama. They step back from the Jerry Springer. They step back from the, the chaos. They step back from time controlling them and they use time to, to plant seeds see here's the secret to time time just repeats every day it's the same stuff cycles daily weekly monthly yearly cycles okay this is so important what i'm going to say is it will change your life if you understand time is not linear it's just a repeat and you know that's true because jesus and god's outside of time and Jesus is God, by the way. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So they're outside of time. They're looking down. Even the saints in heaven, they're outside of time. The angels are outside of time. They peer into our existence and we're in time. And they see us thinking linearly instead of just cycles. Instead of thinking eternal, we, th we think uh, linear, you know. It's all happening now. But anyway... Instead of you getting upset with the cycles, oh no, the bills do, the power bills do, the the mortgages do. Oh no, it's a, it's this happened, this happened before. Oh no, there's a tragedy in the family. This happened in the, the gener. My grandparents had this same tragedy, and they had my grandparents had diabetes, and my mom had diabetes, and now I'm getting it. No, you don't. No, wrong. What did your parents do? What did your grandparents do? do the opposite did they eat bread did they eat sugar did they fast did they eat two meals a day instead of three did they eat snacks did they look at their look at your grandparents talk to them if they're still alive talk to the parents and pay attention to how they lived so use the cycles to learn from the cycles and create a harvest not a curse but most people Keep doing the same thing over and over. But the cycle proves that it's not beneficial. Their harvest, their seed that they're planting is not producing a good harvest, but a bad harvest. So by using the cycles, they can change their behavior, change their response, change the seed that they plant in the cycle, and have a harvest, a birthing that's beneficial. That's it. While you're here, we don't want to be here. We would like to be in heaven. But while God has left us here, use your time wisely. Produce. Be fruitful and multiply. It goes back to multiplication, pr produce, product, birthing out copies of something good. Why birth out copies of something bad? Why not birth out copies of something good? Birthing out a copy inside this copy machine, which leaves a legacy or a ghost image when you're dead and gone. It creates an image of something good, something beneficial, instead of something destructive. And when you step into that understanding, everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you think is creating a copy or an image in this simulated matrix training program. And so when you step out of that and you step into the truth, then you become a, a printer in 3D and you're printing out 
a harvest and a blessing and something good. Why do they call it Mother Earth? Because it's reproducing. What is reproduction? Like, why do they keep playing? Why do they keep making Superman movies? Why do they keep making Batman movies? Why do they keep making uh, superhero movies? They'll make another Jessica Jones series. No doubt about it. You know, there's a th question up in the air. Are they going to do it? Yeah, they'll do it. It might, it might be the same actor, hopefully, but it'll probably be a different actor. We'll see. A lot of times they make these movies and it's not even about the money. It's about a concept. And these concepts are for you to have a conception. And so these concepts are you for you to have a conception. And when it starts to, when you start to conceive and it births into your mind and your heart and your will and your emotions and your intellect, and you start to receive and conceive a deeper understanding, then you change, you become a new person, and once you start this process daily, each day you're new, each month you're new, every two months, you're changing and changing and changing and changing. I'm not even close to the same person I was 10 years ago. I don't even know that person. And so if I don't know that person, people that I used to know 10 years ago that I don't know now, if I was to go back and talk to them, they don't know me anymore. How can they? And here's another thing. If you're changing on the inside every day and nobody can stop you, nobody can stop you. Not a narcissist, not a psychopath, not if they put you in jail. Nobody can stop you from changing on the inside. So if you change on the inside, guess what happens? You reflect outside. Because it's a copy machine, like I said. So if you're changing on the inside, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your body, soul, spirit, then the outside has to reflect something different back. The old ghost memories, the old ghost copies try to come back. But they can't come back. Je I used to fight with Jezebel all the time. Now I don't fight with Jezebel. But Jezebel still tries to come back and fight with me. I used to fight with the legalist. I don't fight with the legalist anymore because the legalistic people are Jezebel. But they still try to come back every once in a while. You'll say, I already know what they're going to say before they say it. I'll say, faith alone and Jesus alone. And they'll come back. And they'll say, well, yeah, it's faith alone, but you got to do some works. See, already know what they're going to say before they say it because they're a ghost copy. They don't exist in my world anymore. I already know their argument. I know the Gnostic argument. I know the witch's argument. I know the Gematria argument. I know all their arguments. I know the Book of Enoch motivation. The Book of Enoch motivation or any other book any other book they use besides the Bible is to try to, to bring the Bible down to their level. Instead of the Bible being held high and up above, they're trying to bring the Bible down to that book. Now, there might be some truth in all those books because there's truth everywhere right in front of you all the time. If you watch a movie or listen to music or nursery rhymes, truth is encoded. Everything out of your mouth is from source. And for for you to live a logical life, this is, this, is the, this is really important, what I'm going to say. Every word out of your mouth is from source. The Logos word. And for you to have a logical conversation with somebody, for you to have a logical process of going to the store, a logical process of doing a job, anything that's logical goes back to L-O-G-O-S. L-O-G-I-C, the log, the Logos. So anything that's logical out of your mouth, no matter if it's a, a book that a man wrote, there is just going to be truth in it to some degree because if, as long as it's logical. But there's going to be a point, if it's contrary to the truth, where it's no longer logical. This is how you know that the extreme left, the left in general, get it wrong. They're wrong. They're illogical. So when you're dealing with a person who's illogical, 
they do not have sound doctrine. They have no truth. So everything about them is going to be contrary. And it's actually a curse. Because if, if doctrine determines behavior, and it does, and they have no doctrine because they're not logical, they have no truth, it's in everything behind, everything they're doing is illogical, so their behavior is going to be illogical, and they're going to be down in destruction. Because it's going to be contradictory behavior, and if it's contradictory thoughts and behavior, they're contradicting themselves, they're a walk in contradiction, so they're destroying their own self. It's really easy. It's really easy. It's not complicated. It's hard for me to read an article, though, and not talk about uh, the simulation, the hologram, time, all these basic overarching patterns that are so important that it would change your life. You know, it's hard for me not to talk about. And the and it, I feel like if I talk about it from different perspectives, maybe it'll click, you know, with somebody. Some people will wake up. The biggest thing I wanted to leave you right there is what I just said. If Jesus is lo Logos, and the word logic unfolds from Logos, everything unfolds from Logos, then if you write a book that's logical, there's going to be truth that points back to the biblical truth, which points back to Jesus, which points back to the creation. It points back to the whole thing. See, the earth and time is befallen. The earth plane fell. That's why the earth groans waiting for the sons of God to appear. Because when we bring things back into logic, and it's not legalism, it's just what's right. You don't have to, you know, if somebody says, well, I can't do right. I don't know how to do right. It's because you're thinking wrong. If you under, you don't need rules once you understand love and truth. Once you have love and truth, you don't need rules because love and truth is a rule to itself. You, book, you rise above the law. If you understand the purpose of the law, there's a higher plane. The law was just given to take and show you that the energy of the flesh is weak. You can't do it. And so when you transform your mind into spirit mind, then you're above the law and you walk. If your mind is above the law and you understand the overarching patterns of why God said, love your neighbors yourself, do unto others as you have them do unto you. When you understand, because you're looking at a different version of yourself. Another person is per the sun. Everything's a derivative from the sun. S-O-N. And so if everything's a derivative from the sun, even all creation, the Bible talks about being kind to animals. Yeah, there's no doggy heaven, but all the created creatures down here, you should treat with kindness, you know. Now, if they're trying to attack you or bite your family or try to, if they got some kind of rabies or something, they got to be taken down, you know. But it's, it's, uh, it's not living under law. It's living above the law by renewing the mind. If the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, how do you do that? You can't do it in the energy of the flesh. You can only do it by renewing your mind, which is spirit. So this, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So when you renew your mind, then you're not under law. You're above the law. And everything inside the law, you're already doing because it's... That's the easy button. You don't need a law anymore because you're a law to yourself because you're in the spirit walk. It's really, it's really not that complicated. If you, if you take anything away from this, you're leaving a copy. And it's either going to be a good copy in truth, which re will re replicate itself, or it's going to be a bad copy, which is going really not real. It's a ghost, and it's negative, and it hurts people. So whatever copy you leave, words, actions, thought, behavior, responses, Whatever copy you throw out there, it has to reflect back because it's a copy machine. You reap what you sow. I don't know where the verse is, but there's a verse that says, God, whatever good you do, he's going to reward you. 
It might not be according to what you think it is, but God is going to re reward a pure heart, a pure motive, a pure mind, a pure uh, goal. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but is, is your goal, is that your goal to be above the status quo? Because the status quo is, don't touch that, that's mine. Instead of passing it on and giving it out freely, if God gave you, everything you have is free, really. Even if you take a job, all you have to do, you didn't have to create that business. You just sign a piece of paper and put your social security, put your name, and you go to that job and you start getting a paycheck. You didn't have, you had no skin in the game. You had no skin in the game. And all you, only skin in your game is to show up. That's the easy button. The person who starts the business or runs a bit, they have all the stress. So really, you got it made, to be honest with you. It's free. It was free money. They, Their blood, sweat, and tears to start that business. And all you do is step into it and start receiving a check. That's free money. You just have to be there. That's time, you know. And then while you're there, you can be doing stuff on the side to create your own little side business. And you don't even stress about your side business because you've got a job, you know. And with this technology and Internet, you can do a side business and still work two jobs if you really wanted to. But I wouldn't suggest that. Just use your time wisely and your finances and try to get out of debt. Long story short, what you throw out there, whether you want to call it a legacy, whether you want to call it a, a copy, everything that you're doing, you're throwing out a copy or an image. If God made man in his image, man is making images of himself down here. And hopefully a man will try to mimic the image of Christ. When we see him, we'll be like him. But while you're down here, you can see him in the mind's eye. You can see him through his words. You can see him through his uh, doctrine. And you can see the way he thinks. And you can actually see, like, if you took all the humans in the world and kind of put an image together of their shape, you could probably see a picture of Jesus. If you put all the humans together and in artwork, you would probably see a, a, a picture, a similar, similar picture of Jesus. All the shapes, the faces, and all that. Anyway. Got sidetracked, but I think it's worth it.